Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about how to develop your aim. So this one's going to be more based around aim labs and Kovacs 2.0, the meta. Both of those are great aim trainers. They're going to do wonders for you. But it's going to also be about uh, clearing up misconceptions about aim training that a lot of people are getting wrong, including pros. I hear them say it all the time. Um, I'm also going to be talking about how to make yourself more efficient whenever trying to develop and train a skill. And then also what to incorporate in your routine, how to actually train. Uh, and how to just make yourself be more efficient whenever you're trying to develop your aim and or any skill movement. They all kind of go together and I'll hit a, more, a little bit more about that in just a second. So let's go and get into the video. All right, so first things first, I feel like it's necessary for me to establish credibility here because why should you listen to me at all about anything I'm about to say? Like, who am I? Um, so I hate throwing around credentials, but I do feel like it's necessary for this type of video. So I'm certified to be a strength and conditioning coach. I'm also a certified personal trainer, and I have a minor in sports coaching. And all three of those just mean I've spent the past few years learning how to do and how to train people to do skill movements more efficiently. And aiming is actually a skill movement, uh, just like shooting a basketball or throwing a baseball. It's basically just your central nervous system working with your muscles to establish uh, synaptic chains or mind-muscle connections um, or muscle memory to be able to perform that action subconsciously within a game more efficiently and consistently. Uh, because that's the end result, that's the end goal. You want to be able to play instinctually and not have to think about every action you're about to do. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try not to go too deep into the science rabbit hole. Uh, if you, I could definitely make a video on that if you guys wanted me to. But I'll try to put everything in layman's terms um, to help you understand because I think you guys need to understand you know, what's actually going on up here for you to be able to train it correctly. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so the first misconception I want to talk about, and I'll try to make this one quick, is the fact that you need to train your aim for X amount of hours every single day to um, develop good aim, which is just simply not true. So whenever you're learning a skill movement or training a skill movement, uh, your central nervous system is getting taxed. And just like any other part of your body, your central nervous system gets tired. Um, and that's when you start to experience diminishing returns. Your training is not as effective whenever your central nervous system is taxed. Um, so once your central nervous system gets taxed, it then takes a break or you take a break and your cent central nervous system starts to rebuild upon itself um, and it builds synapses, um, muscle memory, mind muscle connections, any of those. Uh, it builds those to make that movement more effective, efficient, consistent, all those things. Um, so the way it works is about after about the 60 minute mark, you'll start to experience diminishing returns and the number is different for everybody, but it's the 60 minute mark is a good time frame. You're going to experience those diminishing returns up to about the 90 minute mark. And after 90 minutes or so, you're going to experience really heavy diminishing returns. And that's when you're going to want to take a break um, and let your central nervous system recuperate itself. So the best way to manipulate this is uh, right before you play the game, you want 15 minutes to 30 minutes of warm up. Don't overdo it and tire yourself out. Um, you're going to play perform worse than you expected. Um, but after the game, after you play, then you could spend another 15 to 30 minutes of aim training if you wanted to, just because, you know, tax your central nervous system the rest of the way. If it's late at night, I wouldn't. Um, but then whenever it gets to that nighttime, that's when you're going to go for 60 to 90 minutes of aim training just to really tax out your central nervous system, um, give it all the information that it can take in. And then whenever you go to sleep, that's the best time you learn skills best whenever you do it right before you go to sleep because then it immediately starts to build those synapses, um, the synaptic chains, whatever. And that's when it really gets implemented and you learn it the best right before you go to sleep. So in the morning, don't tax yourself out if you're going to play the game that day. And then right before you go to sleep, train heavily. That way you can go to sleep and learn as much as you can while you're sleeping. That's the best time to learn. So the misconception that you hear all the time is the best way to get good at aiming is to play the game which is just completely not true. It's the same way as like shooting a basketball. If someone told you the best way to get good at shooting a basketball is to play basketball, you'd probably laugh at them because it, it doesn't really make sense. Um, so let's talk about Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant, the best basketball player of all time, the best skill athlete of all time, in my opinion. Um, so the way he would work out is he would wake up early in the morning and then train for two hours. And then he would take a small break, and then he would train for two hours more, and then he would take another break, and then he would scrimmage later into the evening. So this is the perfect workout plan because there's three tiers for learning a skilled movement. First of all is muscle memory. You have to train the ability to actually do the movement. So for him, he would come in and do a very basic movement and train it. Just like you for aiming, say you want to do flicking, you would come in and then you would practice for a while on just your flicking movement. 
and then you would take a small break to let your central nervous system refresh. That way you're not taxing your central nervous system anymore. And then you would uh, practice that muscle memory movement, the same muscle memory movement. And then you would turn it into a game specific movement, right? Like, so for him, it would be, you know, shooting a three. This time it would be catching the ball and then shooting a three, right? The catch and release. For you, it could be flicking. And then now you are taking that flick and you're combining it with a peek out and then flicking to a target and killing, right? So that's a game specific movement. And then you take those practices and you put them into a game, you focus on them specifically, and that's how you work it from a muscle memory movement to a game specific movement to now it's something that you can actually do unconsciously in game or subconsciously, whichever one you want to say. Um, you want it to be where you don't have to think about it. It just happens instinctually in game and you get more and more effective of it as you go. So that's how it works. You have to focus on the uh, three tiers of the skill movement and then break it down and specifically work on it that way. You, you don't just go to tier three and play the game to try to get good at uh, aiming in the game. That's not how it works. Um, so hopefully I've cleared up that misconception. Okay, so which aim trainer should you use and should you use an aim trainer? So first of all, the difference between aim labs and Kovax is Kovax, uh, your, your reason for improving is based on trying to be better than other people. So after a game of Kovax, you're immediately shown a leaderboard um, and where you sit in that leaderboard based on the score that you've gotten high score. Uh, so your reason for improving is to try to move up that leaderboard and be better than other people. On AIM Labs, there's a ranking system, and you're playing against yourself to get a higher rank uh, in the ranking system. Obviously, there's leaderboards as well. But AIM Labs, your reason for improving is to get better yourself. Uh, so if either one of those work for you better than the other or motivates you more, I would say pick that AIM trainer. AIM Labs also free, so I expect more people to use AIM Labs. Um, or aim lab, sorry. But uh, if one of those work best for you, go for that one because you're more likely to stick with it. Should you use an aim trainer? I say yes because the practice mode just kind of doesn't cut it, and in game also doesn't cut it. So in aim lab, you can it's it's relatively easy to hit uh, 300 flicks in less than two minutes. That's that's a very tangible thing to achieve. Uh, you can do that in practice mode, but there's way less variables, way less customization, uh, and it's impossible in an actual game. You may get one flick every two rounds or so on average, um, and compare that to 300 flicks in two minutes. It's just, it's just a no-brainer in my opinion. Okay, so I'm going to give specifics for how to train these uh, facets in just a second, but the three different types of aiming is flicking, and then there's tracking, and then there's micro adjustments. This has precision, it's actually micro adjustments. Uh, so flicking is longer distances, you're moving your crosshair from one target to another very quickly. Tracking is keeping your crosshair on a moving target uh, as best as you possibly can. Uh, same thing goes for whenever you're moving and you're keeping your crosshair placement correct, that's also tracking. So tracking actually helps with your crosshair placement a lot. And then precision, it's actually micro adjustments, um, but precision is very important because that's when you are moving your crosshair a smaller distance and micro adjusting to a target set. So you know whenever you flick to somebody and you flick too far past their head, that is a micro adjustment to then move your crosshair back to that person's head. All right, so I've went over how much you should actually practice in a day. Now I'm going to talk about the very specific ways to actually practice all three of the different um, types of movements or aiming. Uh, so for flicking, let's start off with that. I'm going to talk about it uh, theoretically. I'm, I'll also give you specific things to work on, but different things work for every person. So I'm going to tell you theoretically how you should work on these things. So first of all, flicking is most effective when it's a straight line between one target to the other. So line trace is incredible. And you can set up something like this with Kovax. All you are is something where there's no time limit and targets don't despawn. And you just take your time going from one target to the other in a exactly straight line. So that's what you're looking for. And line trace actually tangibly makes his, makes you do this. I don't think Kovax has anything like this. Um, but yeah, line trace is great. I would just say do this uh, at the very beginning, just like warming up before your actual aim training. And then what you want is something where you get the most repetitions in as quickly as possible. So grid shot um, is the perfect way to do this. And there's a lot of different variations of this on Kovax. One wall, six target is one that comes to mind. Uh, but really, whenever you kill a target, another one pops up. And this, in 60 seconds, it's very easy to get to like 120 different um, flick or repetitions in. So what you want is the most repetitions in the smallest amount of time. So 120 repetitions in 60 seconds is incredible. But this is a very easy version. So once you get really good at grid shot, or you get pretty comfortable flicking, then you need to move to something more difficult like a spider shot. Now this is maybe like a week down the road, or just whenever you're comfortable. 
because spider shot is going to be one target pops back up it's going to be longer distances it's going to be smaller targets variable size targets uh, but it's just going to be more difficult so you're going to force yourself to be more and more precise with your flicks so this is going to help you get really fast with your flicks and be able to do it over and over this is going to fo force you to be able to flick really quickly and then click on that head so this is the progression that you want something um, with a lot of repetitions and then as you get good at it, make it more difficult for yourself by going to a different task like this. Okay, so I'm going to be completely honest here. I think uh, tracking in Kovacs is much better than tracking in AimLab. I think flicking in AimLab is a little bit better than flicking in Kovacs. Um, if I was doing tracking in AimLab, I would be between Switch Track and Sphere Track. Sphere Track is the best for just raw tracking ability. And then switch track is taking that tracking ability and being able to incorporate it into a game by flicking to and then tracking the target. So both of these are really great. Start with sphere track just to get good at it, sphere track just to get good at it, and then you swap to switch track just to really efficient or make your movement more efficient with the flicking to and then tracking. Uh, this one's for speed. This one's for raw tracking ability. Motion track is also interesting, but I would just kind of stay away from it. it. Seems pointless to have to flick back to a target in the very center and then flick to and track again. Seems pointless to me. But on Kovacs, is a little bit different. Uh, these are the three best maps, in my opinion. Air No UFO on no the Skybots is the raw tracking ability one for this one. Uh, the target moves over and over, and you're on it for a long time. It's very difficult. Uh, a lot of people hate this one, but it is very tedious, and it's the best for uh, tracking ability. And then Ascended Tracking V3 and One Wall 5 Targets Pace You Track. Both of those are great as well. It's the Flick 2 and then Track. So I would be between these three, uh, or rotating between these three as I do my tracking training. All right, now finally, let's talk about micro adjustments. So micro adjustment, um, we have uh, Strafe Track. This one's actually really interesting. If you have high sensitivity, I would suggest you start with Strafe Track just because it develops your ability to be able to be gentle with your mouse and slightly move it across the mouse pad. This stops you from whenever you have to micro adjust, you just put a lot of pressure on your mouse so you don't actually move it. Um, this stops that, and that still happens to me every once in a while. So I would suggest go to Strafe Track for a while just at the beginning. And then we have Micro Shot and Spider Shot. Honestly, these two are exactly the same. Micro Shot's just a little bit tighter of the micro adjustments. So I would say for raw micro adjusting ability, Micro Shot's great. Um, and you're going to get a little bit more repetitions per time for Micro Shot. Uh, and then Spider Shot's just going to be a little bit wider of a distance. Uh, but it's going to be virtually the same as Micro Shot. This one's just a little bit more difficult. And it's a little bit wider of a distance to have to micro adjust to. And then for Kovacs, we actually have my favorite um, scenarios in the entire thing. So any of the pressure aiming category, they're going to be great for micro adjustments. So pressure aiming 10 target, 7 target, um, 3 targets fine. Shorten is just a, a shorter version of it. But yeah, any of these are great. These are actually my favorite um, scenarios. But what, are, what they're doing is they're spawning 10 targets. They get bigger and smaller as they go. And it forces you to uh, micro adjust to each one over and over track out your path um, and forces you to continuously micro adjust over and over and it's very difficult but getting good at pressure aiming is getting good at micro adjustments and you can honestly just kind of get lost in these because it's going to immerse you in the thing um, so for Kovacs I would stick to the pressure aiming category for micro adjustments all right, so I hope this video helped in some way. If it did, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, and let me know what you want to see next in the comments down below as well. Uh, my Twitch is going to be in the description if you want to check out some of this stuff live. Uh, make sure you subscribe with the bells on uh, and hit that like button. If you're not already uh, in the habit of doing that, make sure you do that. Not just for me, for anyone that you enjoy a video of because that's the best way to help us out because the algorithm love that stuff. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed everything. Much love. Thanks for stopping by and peace out. And I've been chillin', watchin' the ocean with you Baby up with a slow motion crew And we up in the growlings when people change, but not us And we just chillin', kickin' it, kissed by the sun